CEO, that is initial public offering that has been rolled out, giving an opportunity to customers and the public at large to own at least 20% of the telecom giant. I'm Chris Higeni and I'll be joined by uh, three uh, guests, two gentlemen and a lady who will be helping us understand the dynamics at play, but most importantly, what you need to know as you seek to buy shares in Airtel Uganda. One thing I should tell you before we get underway is that Airtel Uganda made a staggering 1.59 trillion Uganda shillings as revenue last year. That amounts to a net profit of 326 billion Uganda shillings. If you understand figures and no money, Airtel Uganda wants you to be part of that so that next year and the years to come you can also be part of those who receive some dividends especially when the profits come in ladies and gentlemen allow me welcome our guests on the show Janet Anayo investment uh, analyst at Crested Capital Crested Capital are the guys who are leading the brokerage for this particular IPO thanks for joining us Thank you. on her immediate left is uh, Henry Joroge He's the marketing director at Airtel Uganda. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. And on the extreme end, we have uh, Molonji Serwo, head of debt at ABSA Uganda. Many thanks for joining us too. Thank you for hosting us. Let me go straight into the IPO. And since it's Airtel Uganda, we shall begin with Mr. Henry Njoroke. First, give us an overview of what this IPO is, when it was availed to the public in terms of listing, and when is it going to be closed because that is very important yeah thank you very much for for having us and i think it's important for us to have this conversation here yeah number one is that um airtel has been in operation for quite a long time and in this period of time uh, it has accumulated to good results last year so like you like you mentioned mm. last year airtel made 1.59 trillion uh, in revenues and also 326 billion in uh, in profits but but that success has been brought about over a long period of time of investments, of working together with Ugandans, and ensuring that Airtel continue being, you know, the the the, the, the service of choice for most customers. So number one is, uh, we, as part of our mandate, number one to be able to 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 uh, a part of uh, inclusion on the financial markets. Yeah. We we are supposed to lo to list about 20% of our business, which is about 8 billion shares. That's actually happened. The announcement happened on the th on uh, sometimes back about the end 30th of August. about 30th of August. Yeah. And in that period of time, we are offering about 8 billion shares in our business. This uh, this cust customers have had about six weeks to go. There's about two weeks to go for that and they can be able to join and become part of the Airtel family. But, mm -hmm. but for them to become part of the Airtel family, I think it's good for us to just have a conversation about Airtel in general. Mm. If you look at Airtel, Airtel number one is, uh, has about 49% market share. Uh, at the end of May, we had about 14 million customers. And then uh, if you look from a growth point of view, we have been the fastest growing telecom in the, in, in the country for the last five years. And the reason why we are fastest growing is because of some conscious decision which we made initially mm. for us to be able to, pu to bring forward and actually to grow in the level we are in. Number one, customers have actually appreciated and supported us all this way. We have invested in this in this network for a very long time for example we are the only network even today which is 100 percent for 4g network uh, if you look at our distribution we have the widest distribution in this country and we believe that the momentum we are getting will actually continue so that's why we are inviting uh, ugandans to actually join us not as customers but also as shareholders yeah. for us to be able to go this extra mile and be with us as we earn i just want to correct something if you okay. become a shareholder right now mm. you'll actually be eligible for dividends not next year mm -hmm. but actually you'll actually be getting it in the when they declare around uh, november thereabout yes, november correct. thereabout oh. so that, that that's something else that early it's that early yeah. so you, you you'll start earning from then and okay. i think it's very important for customers to realize you only have less than almost 12 days for you to do that because we are closing on the 13th yeah. the offer is closing the 13th of october which yeah. is uh, next week or no or actually next week it's a few days away yeah, a few days mm -hmm. to go so we have a short period of time and would actually advise and encourage Ugandans to participate and, and apply for these shares and, and pay for these shares because you'll be able to join a very interesting journey of 
us being the for us towards leadership at the same time continuing growing and driving uh, d d driving inclusion of basically financial markets in this in this market okay yeah. well, thank you very much yeah. that's very interesting and uh, a very positive outlook when it comes to the uh, telecoms uh, financials it's pretty much something one ought to be part of allow me go to madame Janet Anayo yeah. from Crescent Capital you are the lead broker for this particular IPO yes. right yes. and uh, you're pushing it pretty well. What, what is in it for an investor? Yes. Um, I'll say this for starters. Given our experience in the capital markets, for every company that comes to the market, mm. it is structured differently to encourage local participation, mm. especially for the Ugandan market. We are not people typically that understand the stocks. Uh -huh. So it takes a lot of investor education to get someone on board, mm -hmm. but also the companies on their end, because an IPO, quite frankly, is costly yeah, for sure. the company, right. but also to get people to participate, they do encourage them. For instance, Airtel mm -hmm. that is saying, you know what, if you come in at IPO, I'm going to give you incentive shares. I mean, which Ugandan doesn't like a bonus? Which <laughs> Ugandan doesn't like a nyongeza? <laughs> okay, even when you're buying data, you uh, try to look for that <laughs> bundle that is... That is right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So cause sometimes it takes you quite a... T you know, you look, go to daily bundle, you go to weekly, you go to monthly. So even just for this particular IPO, the pricing is structured that depending on your pocket, mm. you, you qualify for incentive shares. For, so for the retail investors, um, you can you qualify for bonus shares between five to twenty for every a hundred that you invest mm. for every a hundred shares that you invest in so the and then there's also mobile money if you use the mobile money platform you're eligible for six bonus shares for every a hundred okay. so that's just one of the ways that they're incentivizing the local participants especially Ugandans to participate to be part of the company but more to that, there's also dividend that Henry talked about, mm. that you're not even holding the stock for more than three months, and, you begin and you're getting a dividend next mm. month, the dividend that's for Q3. So I'm encouraging everyone to participate, to be part of the growth of the company. Good. For yes. perspective, mm. the layman, a uh, Ugandan out there, yes. the word shares, dividend, investment, stock is a bit gray. Yes. And they would love to understand, for example, if I put mm. 250,000 Uganda shillings mm. onto the Airtel IPO as yes. part of my maximum share holding as in to buy, and the quarter passes and November or the year, like uh, Mr. Jeroge says, before the end of the year, I get a payout. Oh, yes. How much money are we talking about? Yes. Okay. Within the region, mm. so that somebody out there can figure it out pretty quickly. Okay, for an average Ugandan, mm. Airtel is saying you can start investing with a minimum amount of 250,000. Mm -hmm. Now, 250,000, remember, each share costs 100 shillings only. That's right. Chikumi. <laughs> yeah. So, at 100 <laughs> shillings, with your 250,000, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. able to get 2,500 shares. Now, remember, we have talked about the Nyonges, the That's bonus. Right. So, for if you use mobile money, which I believe most clients are going to be using, you'll be getting six additional shares mm -hmm. for every 100. So, you end up with 2,650 bonus shares. Now, on top of that, they are saying, you know what? Thank you so much for participating in the IPO and being a part of Airtel. So, for the next, next month, which is November, will be paying a dividend. Now, a dividend in layman is a profit. Mm. Part of a company's profit paid out to shareholders. That's why it comes to a dividend. Okay. Now, d according to their prospectus, is that the company estimates to pay about 513 billion in dividends mm. to their clients. However, they've already paid out 118 billion, which leaves about 397 billion so according to the company's discretion, I'm very sure Henry and the team will be able to declare mm. the particular amount that investors are interested in okay. very soon. All right. Mm. Thank you. Mr. Mulungi Silva, Absa Bank is uh, pretty much part of this sure. and it's huge in the banking sector, uh, providing uh, services across board. Within the workings of this particular IPO, take us through Absa's role. 
Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, in this role, uh, most people, when they look at a bank, they think this is a place where I just go deposit your money, get a loan, and uh, <laughs> that's what, uh, <laughs> that's the percep <laughs> perception that uh, an average guy has. Mm. But however, banks also offer advisory services, uh, not right. just APSA, uh, other, other banks at large. Uh, and in this, uh, we have a dual role. We are lead transaction advisor mm -hmm. and lead receiving bank as well. Uh -huh. So the process of listing is uh, quite uh, a significant undertaking. I mean, you have to navigate lots of things. You have to navigate uh, regulatory requirements. You have to interface with uh, lots of stakeholders. Uh -huh. You're talking to the CMA, USE, or uh, dealing with lawyers in terms of uh, uh, them doing whatever they have to do as far as uh, legal opinions are concerned you're dealing with reporting accountants so uh, Airtel uh, had to hire lo lots of advisors there were lawyers uh, uh -huh. accountants is uh, PR firms share registrars and also as as lead transaction advisors so our role is uh, to guide Airtel uh, navigate uh, the journey of listing, uh, right. guide them in terms of structuring the transaction, guide them in terms of uh, what the offer price should be, and uh, ultimately ensuring that uh, we have a successful listing. And as ABSA, we've done uh, this before. ABSA advised uh, the first telco to list in, uh, that listed in uh, Tanzania, for instance. Mm. Uh, we are quite involved in uh, the listing of uh, Airtel Africa. This is not the first time uh, we've dealt with uh, Airtel in terms of uh, listing. So uh, we've done this before, and we are happy to uh, provide uh, this service uh, to Airtel as uh, it navigates uh, uh, the listing of uh, its shares on uh, the stock exchange. Uh, in addition to that, and like I said, we also uh, lead receiving bank. Yeah. Uh, there are five uh, receiving banks uh, on this uh, transaction. There is ABSA, Stambik, Standard Charter, DFC, and Equity. Yeah. Uh, but ABSA is uh, doing the lead receiving bank role. Uh, in terms of uh, the role of these banks, uh, an applicant can walk to uh, any of uh, these banks mm, yeah. and uh, fund the applications like uh, my colleague said. Uh, when you apply for shares, you apply for those shares with money. You need to fund uh, mm. that application. And money is always involved. Yes, you there. don't just fill the form. <laughs> you need to fund that application. And uh, these banks That's right. are available to support uh, Ugandans uh, throughout uh, the process. Okay. Yeah. Later, I'll be engaging you on uh, advisory, especially when it comes to debt and uh, investment, because the nation and indeed the region but also the world is grappling with a few issues with regard to that. But let me return to Mr. Henry Injoroge, the marketing director at Airtel. When the 20% is offered to the public as ownership, there were mm -hmm. questions that were asked initially. How does this come about? Two fronts. Airtel has been making a lot of money, as we say. 1.59 trillion Uganda shillings as revenues and uh, a staggering 300 and 26 billion in profits yeah. is big money and uh, it's a prudent move uh, for the telecom to be able to share with its customers but is it only limited to customers of Airtel or the public at large because somebody out there might be wondering if Airtel is offering this to the public but I'm not an Airtel customer can I go in it could be an advantage to bring that customer on board and they also buy an Airtel line uh, thank you very much for that and I think it's it's a good question because mm -hmm. we need to clarify to the public. That's right. Uh, right now for the IPO, anyone can be able to participate and buy shares in Airtel. Mm -hmm. The 8 billion shares are available for Ugandans, not just Airtel customers. Any Ugandans or any person who would want to buy shares, they can be able to buy. Mm -hmm. For Ugandans, you have two options like we said. Number one, if you are an Airtel customer, you can use your Airtel money to apply yeah. and pay for those shares. If you're not if you're not an Airtel customer, definitely that's when we will refer you maybe for example to Crested Capital oh. uh, or maybe any other broker who'll actually be able to buy for you shares or even the banks like you said. So anyone can be able <coughs> anyone can be able to participate in these transactions, not just Airtel customers. I don't think we we want to leave anyone behind. We want to go together with every single Ugandan on every single investor who want to invest in our company. Okay. Yes. Ah, that's good. Now with regard to, I'll, I'll be coming back to you, but pretty much interested to understand a person's decision on investing with Airtel will be very critical. The advisory is very important. 
does it come at a cost somebody who is who wants to go for the least number of shares might think about the cost of advisory and that could hinder or take them to another direction how is it going to be are you offering it to everyone that comes and uh, buys that application form or it is for the big institutional investors alone so um on, on this role, like I said, primarily our role is uh, advising Airtel on uh, the listing. Uh, however, as mm -hmm. ABS, I mean, like I said, we uh, we don't just offer deposit and lending, uh, and we also uh, available to mm -hmm. help uh, the wider public. We have uh, 39 branches spread throughout the country. Each of in each of these branches, we've uh, trained our staff on uh, the IPO. So anyone who I uh, would like to participate in uh, this offer, can walk to any of our branches and uh, talk to uh, our staff there, and uh, they will be guided free of charge. There is no, uh, in as far as this offer is concerned, we mm. don't charge uh, applicants for Nothing. anything okay. whatsoever. Ah. Uh, yeah. That's good. Jenna, what is a retail offer pool? <laughs> yes. So... The pricing mm. of the Airtel IPO is in two different ways. Okay. So there is a retail investor in typical Oleman. Mm. This is Omutu Joe, you and I, an oh. individual, All right. I would say. Mm. Then we have the professional investors. These are normally funds and such kind of groups. So the pricings are different because the average amount that one person, a retail investor, pulls out mm. to invest is different, different from a professional investor. That's so I hope that clears it. Somehow, mm. but uh, I need it broken down a little bit more simply. Mm. Uh, so that is it. Does, does it work within the framework of the 20% or it's within the greater? No. So all it's the retail uh -huh. investors as well as the professional investors uh, are offered the 20% of 20 the company. So the 8 billion. Shares. Yes. Okay. That's mm. interesting. And uh, of course, it's something I'm looking forward to anyway as an individual. But mm. I'll also be getting a little bit more uh, knowledge on uh, the investment uh, portfolios that are available. ABSA Bank. Uh, being uh, one that is one of the banks that uh, Airtel is dealing with on this particular issue, I think this question is for you. When you look at the stock market today and uh, the trading uh, in shares, one it could buy shares and then at one point or two is enticed by another person who missed out, especially with regard to the deadline. How does it work? Can you buy shares from somebody who has just bought shares and it looks like they might want to let some off. I don't know whether that was specifically for Crested Capital or okay. ABSA. I can respond and she can okay. ch chime right. in. Uh, Please. So uh, typically what's happening is like, uh, like Henry said earlier, the offer opened on uh, 30th August and mm. is closing on uh, the 13th of October. Mm. During this time, What's happening is uh, individuals uh, or in Uganda, the general public can apply for shares. At this point in time, we we are just receiving applications. So we've not yet like allotted shares. So we just uh, rece receiving what the, the general public is bringing forth. Yeah. Then uh, on uh, the third year, uh, we'll announce uh, allotment. They'll say, you know what, uh, Henry applied for ten thousand shares. He's gotten ten thousand. 31st uh, listing shares will be listed and trading commences now. If you have not bought shares or if you've not applied for shares during the offer period, you still have the opportunity to buy on uh, the secondary market after the shares have been listed. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, maybe just to add on what he has said, Airtel selling its shares to the public is what we call a primary market. Mm -hmm. That means the mm -hmm. first time a company sells it shares to the public. Yeah. So now there's advantages to entering at IPO or at the first time because in the secondary market you won't get bonus shares. No. So now is the time that even if they say one share is a hundred shillings, but they're going to give me a bonus, effectively I'm not paying a hundred shillings. That's I'm paying lower than a hundred shillings. That's right. Now once you miss this opportunity, like he said, between thirtieth August on 13th October, yeah. you have to come in at the secondary market after that time, after mm. the shares have been 
allotted to every applicant mm. and after the company has listed on our stock exchange. Okay. So in the secondary market, the, the one of the risks that you face is the price could go up. So now if you woke up one morning and Airtel was no longer at 100 and mm -hmm. it's at 150, that means for every share that you want to buy, you'd have to buy it at 150 and not at, not 100, at 100 and no bonus shares. And even you'd have missed out the dividend mm. for Q3. So the advantage yeah. is pretty much dashing now. Dashing yeah. now. Yes. And, get and on top of yeah. that, you'll pay, you'll, pay, you'll pay some charges on the secondary market. On the yes. secondary market. Right now, for mm. the transaction, the mm. charges are actually waived by Airtel. Mm. But if you have to go to the secondary market after the 31st, you'll actually be paying what you call a, a transaction Commission. fee, mm -hmm. yeah. which is paid to the brokers. About 2% there, about 2.1. Okay. Okay. All point right, one. gentlemen and uh, lady, I'm going to go for a break. But when we return, we shall delve more into this IPO and specifically understand why it has come at this moment in time. Is it a regulatory concern and mandate or need? Or at the end of the day, the market forces of uh, demand and supply do indicate that it's about time that everyone gets a part of the cake. Stay with us. We'll be right back. On the 31st August 2023, Airtel Uganda, one of the leading mobile telecommunications providers in Uganda, listed its shares on the Uganda Securities Exchange, USE, for the first time in an initial public offer that closes on the 13th of October 2023. Airtel will now transition from being privately owned by a relatively small number of investors to having its ownership distributed among a larger group of shareholders, including individual and institutional investors. With this new development, any eligible investor can apply to buy as many shares as they want anytime between 30th August 2023 to 13th October 2023. With this initiative, the benefits of investing in an IPO with Airtel Uganda include dividends, capital gains, voting rights, collateral, transferability, diversification, among others. Join us for a live discussion on Airtel IPO on NTV Twitter page and Airtel Uganda social media platforms this 4th October at 7.30 p.m. The panelists include Dennis Abigaba Kakonge, Legal and Regulatory Director, Airtel, Nishant Mohan, Chartered Accountant at the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Donald Tresiga, Information Technology Director, Janet Anayo, Investment Analyst at Crested Capital, Catherine Namujuzi, Head of Governance and Compliance. The next episode is brought to you by Rock Boom. Feel the positive energy. On the next episode. Angela, Isa, Rigo adores you. He's a very loyal, sensitive, and honest man. He only wants to better himself just because he loves you, and you can't buy that with money. Uh, Angela, you see, I won't be able to live without money, and you know that if I marry <sighs> Beto. Don't underestimate me, Antonio. If someone knows what strings to pull, it's me. And I suggest that you remind your friend Octavio that, huh? No, 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 Letitia, and you disobeyed me, damn it! I told you Rafael can't take anything out from this ranch! I am not one of your employees who you uh. give orders to! I'm Rafael! Rock Boom, now in a new bottle with the same taste and same positive energy! Available in a 320 ml PET bottle. Rock Boom. Feel the positive energy. <laughs> All right, the conversation is already underway behind the scenes, but. I'm glad you are still with us wherever you are watching from. It's a special program and we are talking about the benefits of investing in the initial public offering that is IPO that has been rolled out by the telecom giant Airtel Uganda. Within the studio I have with me Janet Anayo, an investment analyst at Crested Capital. These are the top brokers for this particular IPO. I also have uh, Mulungi Seruo, 
head of date at Absa Bank, as well as the man of the moment in as far as this particular uh, talk show is concerned, Henry Njoroge, Marketing Director at Airtel Uganda. And I would like to go to him straight and ask the question, government required that telecom companies list at least 20% of shares to the public to allow for the customers and any other person who has a business mind to be part of what is no doubt a profitable industry and endeavor. However, there is also the wave that money is being made. And some people out there might be wondering, is it a case of a company wanting to share a part of itself with us or responding exclusively to the law as rolled out by the government? I, I think the, the main point is that these two are actually complementary. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why the government gives a directive like the one it gave that for every telecom company you have to act, you have to at least about 20 percent it's also mm -hmm. the objective is to ensure that every single ugandan can take charge can take can take part in basically the the capital markets of the country because if you want to develop the capital markets of the country mm -hmm. the best way is to involve as ma as many ugandans as possible, as possible in the capital yeah. markets and so right now yes it's a th that's one of, what's one one of the reasons is because we as part of our licensing we need to do that but also as a company mm -hmm. if you look as a company airtel Airtel has actually grown and is actually a Ugandan company. We we make we our business is to provide that connectivity to every single Ugandan. Yeah. All the way, wherever you may be from, whether you're from the north, center, central, north, east, all of them. We provide service to and it is actually a very good point if Airtel can also be part owned by Ugandans. Yeah. By being part owned by Ugandans, we are participating in the development and the growth of this company, of the of this country. So definitely yes, that these two I, I don't see them as different see them complementing each other mm. it helps in terms of deepening the the capital growth uh, capital markets growth in this country give you another avenue for investments not mm. just properties as well yeah. you can actually invest in shares of the company which is actually more flexible and more fluid and if you look from the then the what you're buying into you're buying into a very profitable company a company mm. which has been here for the last 25 years a company which has invested in a lot a lot in the network a company which has a license which is going to last for another 20 years so we have the investment you're getting into is actually a very good investment itself. Yeah. So we we believe that this process of IPO for Airtel Uganda will, number one, help in terms of growth of capital markets in this country. And then second thing as well, encourage Ugandans to participate yeah. in this particular investment. At the same time as well, as Airtel, will actually feel honored for us to also be part owned by Ugandans in this country. Okay. Yes. Is there a possibility that uh, the ownership for the public could be extended at one point, especially whether advocacy could happen and then we go to 25 or 30. It's very likely. We, si we simply have to wait on the law. No, it's very likely because <laughs> it's not just, a, at that time it will not just be an issue of the law. Uh -huh. it's, it will also be, uh, if at all we see, first of all, a 20%, the uptake is actually quite positive. Mm -hmm. And a, there could be other reasons which will bring, uh, which, will, which will come, but definitely that's an opportunity which will be there and something which most likely could happen. Okay. Yes. Let me return to uh, Janata and I from Crested Capital. The question of whether there could be a possibility of increasing mm. that from all stakeholders, the legislators uh, designing a new law that requires telecoms to, for example, increase from 20 to 25, mm. is a matter of flexibility <laughs> within the investment space. Mm. And uh, with regard to the IPO itself, how flexible will it be going forward? Okay. Mm. Um, that's a good question. Frankly, um, one thing I'll say is that for a long time, Ugandans have been skeptical about the market. Mm -hmm. They have been hesitant to participate. And different companies, I think if you look at the recent IPOs, they have been structured differently, but mostly to encourage people, but also importantly to build confidence, confidence yeah. in the stock market. Mm -hmm. So if you enter right now at IPO, for instance, sometimes we have, we have had clients that apply for the shares and then the following day he calls you and says i want to sell mm -hmm. now remember he has not yet been allotted and the shares yeah. so it's very important that as you invest right now as you pull out that two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. out of your pocket you're aware of the timelines of the transaction yes, just right. like mulunji said that till allotment which happens on 30th october mm -hmm. and then till the company lists on the stock exchange you will not be able to get that money back 
So now when the company is officially listed and now secondary trading can take place mm. is when you can sell. So for any person that wants to buy more shares post IPO or wants to sell, I can assure you there will always be a buyer, there will always be a seller. Mm -hmm. The price will just be what now determines if the two parties connect and the transaction happens. So the flexibility to come in and to go out or what we call liquidity in mm -hmm. the stock market, mm -hmm. it's there and it can be addressed. Yes. Okay. Malungi mm -hmm. Sewo, the investment landscape right now, she spoke about the fact that very many people are skeptical, perhaps because they might not understand the investment landscape and the brokerage or whatever goes on at the stock exchange. Right now, if I were to ask, like uh, I always say, my cobbler speaks from a very uh, open mind, not, no expert, he simply speaks his mind. Is the stock market making money? Uh, th thank you for that question. So. Uh, I, I would answer it differently mm -hmm. uh, from whether the stock market is uh, making money. For first of all, I think for any person out there, when you're looking to invest uh, in shares, you need to understand exactly what you're getting into. That's right. Investing in shares is uh, simply uh, investing uh, in a company, you become a part owner. Mm -hmm. uh, just using a simple example, assuming uh, Janet here has a salon and she's an expert in the salon business. Mm. If I give her one million shillings, I become a part owner in a salon business and the mm. benefit I get from that is uh, profits at the end of the day. Mm. Same thing here with Airtel. Uh, Henry knows how to run Airtel, so we are yeah. investing in his business. Right. And the expectation is that at the end of the day, we are going to get a benefit in form of dividends. So let, let's first understand what it is that we're getting into. So when you're investing, it's more, I think, uh, I would advise uh, the public to understand the, the asset that they are investing in, to understand the company that uh, they are investing in, to understand the fundamentals, be comfortable with uh, that particular asset, that particular company. And as advisors, we put together a, quite an elaborate document called the Prospectus. It's uh, a whole 320 pages. I encourage uh, Ugandans and the public at large to look at that document, read it, or get your advisors to read it and uh, uh, ensure that you understand what's in there. So uh, I think it's more, to my mind, it's more understanding the fundamentals of the company uh, because it's the company that makes money, uh -huh. you not know, the stock market. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's a company that's generating that's, profits, uh -huh. it's a company that's generating uh, the dividends that's go that are going to pay you, not uh, the, stock the stock exchange. Uh, and as so well, uh, further to what uh, Jana Janet mentioned, uh, I, I think also perhaps also we need uh, maybe to get away from uh, the short-term mindset mm. or short-term perspective because just as an example, assuming you build rentals mm. today and you expect to get rent, you, you're not going to sell them immediately. Yeah, yeah, uh, construction is finished. You're not going to come to me and say, hey, Mulunji, these rentals, I'm selling them. Typically, you build them with the expectation mm -hmm. of getting rental income. That's right. You're investing in Airtel with expectations of getting dividends over a given period of time. So I think we need to have um, a longer-term outlook. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once we do that, we'll have... Um, a better perspective. Okay, let me introduce an academic argument or scenario to this. Sure. Profits are made mm. and dividends are paid out to the investors. Sure. But in case the economy tanks and then the losses come in, mm. Mm. what mm. is the investor supposed to do at that point? Expect nothing and agree that, yes, I went in there knowing that mm. these guys can make profits but also losses. Is that the case? Yeah. So uh, thank you for that question and I think it's uh, very valid. Uh, risk is a part of our life. Okay. I mean there's going to be risk in anything that you get into. Mm. Uh, I, I cannot sit here and say uh, the world is risk free. Uh, the world is full of risks, so is investing. So mm. uh, as an equity investor, as an investor in shares, you're going to be subject to risks. Uh, Airtel, for instance, operates within an environment. That environment is called uh, Uganda. Mm. 
Oh. It operates within a sector. That sector is called uh, the telecommunication sector. Uh, Airtel as an entity itself could be subject to uh, risks as uh, as a company. Oh. So there's going to be risks that uh, an investor will be subject to. If uh, inflation goes up, it means uh, Airtel's costs of uh, pr uh, cost of sales or operating expenses will go up, and yeah. that will have a bearing on uh, Airtel as a company. It has nothing to do with uh, the management team at Airtel. It's yeah. just that in the economy, inflation has gone up, and yeah. that inflation trickles down to at the end of the day higher operating costs and lower profits. Maybe let me go to the boardroom as the mm. <laughs> marketing director, <coughs> and you're seated, and you guys are trying to thresh through what risks could come as we go along? What are the safeguards? So if, if you look at, there are some, there are some risks which you can safeguard against, there are some which you... you By you the way, this question is meant to ensure <laughs> there is confidence out there that yes, uh, things yes. are going to be okay. If you look at our business, and, and, and I think uh, it's good for us to look at the business of telecom because that's the one we are in. That's, that's, right. that's, that's a business, that's an asset we're selling. Mm. So number one is, if you look in Uganda, out of the population that we know of 45 million, That's right. the people who have the people who have a SIM card mm. is, is is less than is less than 40 yeah. percent. So if you're in a if you're in a table of 10 friends and all of you have phones, you don't represent Uganda. Mm. There are about 60 percent of our population does not have a SIM card. So I wanted to hold that number. That's number one. Yeah. Second thing, out of the 40 percent who have a SIM card only about 21% have a smartphone. So in your, if you're in a table and all of you have a smartphone, it means you're a different, as in you're in a different zone, you're not exactly <laughs> in Uganda. So from our business point of view, our business, our business is, you, our business revenues is basically voice mm -hmm. and data, mm. and SMS to some extent. Okay. So if you look at voice, voice is the number of customers who come in. So already 40% already have a SIM card. That mm -hmm. means they're making calls. That's right. So from a growth point of view of the business, there's a 60% which is still available. If you look at most other countries, like if you go to Kenya, South Africa, their penetration is almost about 79%. Mm. Out, of how, out of the population, how many people have a SIM card? So for us to move from 40%, any movement positive that way brings in more mm. income to the business as mm. Airtel. And being a 49% market, market shareholder, it means that that, business, that voice business will continue to grow in terms of customers coming. That's number one. Second thing, the biggest investment Airtel did was to actually make the whole country 4G. Mm. And why is it? It's because of that statistic I gave you that 21% only have a smartphone. Mm. And if you, if, you, you can, if you can imagine now there's another a whole population, so it's 21% of of the 40%. So there's still a whole other percentage you don't have smartphones. Yeah. That's another place for growth. So in terms of data, and you know right now, if you're not in Twitter or you're not in social media, not yeah. on WhatsApp, can you imagine how many other people will come in? That's also, also growth as well. Yeah. So from from the Airtel point of view, our, our, our projections we see that definitely will continue to grow, and I think that is actually stipulated in, in the prospectus. Yeah. Of course, there are other risks which will come in. Inflation is one of them. Inflation affects both ways. If inflation affects investments, our own costs, That's and right. also your, the, po the, 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 the pocket. But what we are saying is that Uganda being a very young population, on top of that, only 41, only 40 percent have a SIM card, and then 21 percent are the ones who have a smartphone. It depends a humongous opportunity for us to grow. Mm. So, from an Airtel point of view, I think over time, and I think the risks which are there, and if you look at the reward, the reward is actually much bigger yeah. than actually mm. the risk. So, I would, as an industry, as an industry expert, as someone who has been in this industry for about 18 years, yeah. I tell you, Uganda has a lot of potential to grow. Yeah. There's a big runway which is there for us to actually take off. Oh. The network is already 4G. The spectrum is already paid. The, the license is already paid for for the next 20 years. Yeah. So definitely, majority of the investments has come in. So anything else will actually be trickling down to the customers, and you can see it. If you look at the financials for last year, 95% of the profits were actually declared as dividend. So, and in our prospectors, we have actually stated that we intend to maintain high dividend payouts. Uh -huh. So definitely from a customer point of view, or from an investor point of view, yes, like rentals, you'll get rentals, but at the same time as well, even the, the cost of whatever you invest in may actually go up. Uh -huh. So definitely the dividend will continue going in. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, that's a very good uh, projection and a uh, great positive outlook. No wonder Crested Capital is in it. There are <laughs> other players, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, who are. Uh, would you mind to list them? Yes. So to participate in the IPO, mm. there are 
brokers we are Christ, as crested capital we are the lead sponsoring brokers however yeah. there are also other brokers mm. so there is SBG securities there's old mutual there is Dan Blair and cheaper cash so you can walk to your broker if these are your brokers walk up to them mm. ask them and quite frankly ask the investment analysts are there to do the math uh -huh. to dig up the prospectus to help you say mm -mm, here <laughs> or yes <laughs> <laughs> yes but okay. for starters mm. please walk up to your brokers and seek guidance all right uh, Henry Njoroge spoke about uh, or rather opened our eyes to some of the realities of the market when you say 40 percent of uh, Ugandans are the only ones that are holding sim cards and then the aspect of uh, having a smart phone not being representative of the entire country when it comes to buying these shares many people out there who don't have smartphones will be grappling and they are in the villages mm -hmm. and rural areas if you don't mind take us through again how best i can press my capability and uh, buy some shares Okay. You? Yes. Mm. Um, so to participate, thankfully now we have 5G, we have internet, mm. so everything you can do at your convenience. So to apply, you can simply get your community, you can get your smartphone, starting with you. We are going to dial star mm. 185 <laughs> star 85 hash. Okay. Again, star mm -hmm. 185 mm -hmm. star 85 hash. Mm. Now remember, for you to own shares just not airtel any kind of shares you need an account that's right that an, that account is called an scd account mm. securities central depository account. account that account basically is your evidence that you have shares or you have any financial instrument in the capital markets mm -hmm. that's the account that you need mm. so once you press star 185 star 85 it will require you to apply for that account if you do not have it and all you need is a name simple and very fast and then once that account is set up you can simply press two and you apply for the shares starting with an amount of two hundred and fifty thousand only mm -hmm. if you have 10 million 10 billion please feel free feel free yeah just feel free some of those figures kind of make my eyes teary 10 billion, hey. <laughs> 10 billion. and i'm like okay we shall get there no doubt about that let me go to uh, the man responsible for debt at absa ugandans are indebted beyond measure and many could be grappling with uh, the need uh, to be able to make money without being active the the case of money working for you this is exactly what it is and uh, it is something that they ought to go into i just want you to as we quickly enter the final bend of the discussion talk about debt and uh, we could use this opportunity for you to give a few tips about debt management but also advise us parents who might have children who want to buy shares papa has bought shares and wants a uh, little one to also have shares is it advisable to make get children as young as seven into this um the thank you for that question maybe J janet might help me later on on this uh okay. in terms of getting children younger than seven i think my understanding is first of all uh, like janet uh, initially indicated you need to have an scd account mm. and then an scd account is a company with a NIN. i believe children younger than seven can do have NINs, but yeah. uh Typically, uh, my guidance would be, I mean, uh, getting into the share space is an investment. I would advise someone uh, who is at least 18, uh, mm. who has a, a certain level of uh, maturity uh, to get in this space. I mean, uh, parents can buy shares for, for their kids, but uh, I think the parent can have those shares in custody, sort of, mm. uh, and uh, maybe hand them over to the kids when uh, they are of age. Uh, the question of debt, uh, since you've asked, I mean, uh, my, my sense is uh, only get debt, I mean, if uh, you're going to have cash flows to uh, sustain that debt. Mm -hmm. uh, don't get debt for consumptive purposes. Uh, uh, I, I don't know in terms of, uh, maybe you're asking in terms of debt and the offer, should someone get debt? Uh, again, like I said, do yeah. your homework. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's very juicy, yes. And somebody might want to buy shares, two hundred and fifty thousand being mm. minimum. There are some people out there we grapple to galvanize two hundred and fifty thousand Uganda shillings, mm -hmm. and somebody might consider to go into debt to find that two hundred and fifty, 
And then by November, before you get any dividend, the guys are on your door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, again, uh, my, my guidance would be do not get uh, into this to an extent that is going to, to put a strain on you. Yeah. Yes. You get, don't put money that you can't afford uh, to put away. If you don't have that money, uh, uh, do not get in uh, a situation that's going to put your life or your, uh, your family at risk in any mm. way. Uh, if you are to get debt, ensure that uh, you've weighed uh, the benefits and the costs. Is uh, the revenue or uh, the cash flows that you're going to get, will they be sufficient mm. uh, to pay back that day? They might be from some other source, but you need to have uh, sufficient cash flows to, to pay back that day. And again, yeah. please don't put, uh, don't go out there and get loans that you know will uh, be a strain on you. All right. Uh, closely related to what he says, uh, Janat, I would like you to clarify on... Uh, I think who can invest mm. and for who you can invest for. Yes. So for starters, just like he said, because the requirement is a name. Mm. And so as long as you have a national ID, you can invest. However, I also know of clients that, uh, f you know, everyone's investment profile is different. That's right. So that alone determines what your portfolio, your investment portfolio should look like. Mm. So there are, of course, parents that are a bit old. You know, those parents, sometimes we, us as uh, advisors, wouldn't say put all your money in stocks because mm. there is a risk mm. of the price up and down That's and it right. affects the value of your money. Yeah. However, they have children. So we have accounts that we call ITFs mm. in trust of. So for usually for children, a child that doesn't have a need, a child that's in primary, a parent, you can open an ITF on behalf of your child mm. and those shares are literally almost your child. That's Just right. that the child is not of age mm -hmm. to have a name or to invest. Yes, so it's very possible. Um, maybe what else I would say is that participate. I mean, it's <laughs> we are past <laughs> saying when well, the market and is not market working. Exactly you're you're for you, that. for every company that mm. comes, you're complaining. You never invest, That's and right. we don't move. Just like you said, don't get your last <laughs> savings to put in the market <laughs> because with 250 that's just starters mm. you have to keep investing mm -hmm. for the investment to make sense okay. because 250 gets you 2650 shares and then a dividend let's say they pay five mm. you end up with around 11,000 and you'll be the first person to complain so you have to keep investing mm. yeah yes. all right Henry Jeroge, mm -hmm. Marketing Director at Airtel. I have four broadcasting minutes. I'll give you three to do a wrap on this. I think for, for Airtel, and I'll, I'll speak on behalf of Airtel, we are, we are very excited by this opportunity to, you know, to work with our customers and not only to just work for, for us to even fly with them as we have been doing in the last five years. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. and, and if you look at the organization um, as Airtel, Airtel, first of all, is a, is a part of the second biggest telecom mm -hmm. company in this world. Mm. In, 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 uh, on a, it's, uh, this is actually part of uh, Airtel Bharti. If you look at Airtel Africa, which is part of 14 countries, which, mm -hmm. which operates in 14 countries, it's actually listed on the London Stock Exchange. And quite a number of our operations, Airtel operations in Africa, quite a, no, quite a, a number of them are listed. This is just one of the latest to become listed, which is Uganda. Mm. And if if I look at our if you look at our company and, and what we stand for, we stand for no one we leaving no one behind. If you look at how we have invested, uh, a good example is how we've invested our 4G network. We did not put only, for example, in Kampala. Mm. We decided it has to be everywhere because we are believe that the future is we have to go together. That's right. That's number one. Second thing, if you look at our distribution, we have invested distribution of everywhere. We have one of the large we have the largest distribution network in this country. So if you look at we have almost 3,000 outlets. Anywhere, anywhere there's an urban center, most likely you'll find a Airtel or Airtel or Airtel, Airtel point. Third one, in terms of investment in our people, if you look at, we we have progressively invested in people who can be able to serve our customers right. And some of them, Ugandans, have actually been sent outside the country oh. for them to actually come. So that's that's the other thing. So as a as a company, we believe that we have a good run. We believe that the success will continue being there and we believe that the economy will continue growing and we believe that if you join us we can be able to go together and go further 
like we always say, if you want to go far, you know, go together. Mm. If you want to go first, go alone. But now this time we want to go. We want to go further, <laughs> so we want to go with you. All right. Thank you very much. Henry Njoroge, Marketing Director at Airtel. Many thanks for Thank the you perspective and submission. Many thanks to you too. Uh, Janata Nayo, Investment Analyst at uh, Crested Capital. And of course, uh, Murungi Sewo, Head of Debt at APSA Uganda for the perspective on the IPO. As we close this particular uh, program, just a reminder that Airtel Uganda made a profit of uh, 326 billion Uganda shillings last year. And the IPO is one of the things that will ensure that you, as an individual, are part of this uh, profit-making venture. That's it for this edition of uh, this particular talk show. Uh, talking about the benefits of investing in Airtel Uganda and, of course, taking up some shares in the IPO that has been rolled out. I'm Chris Higeni. Have yourselves a lovely day.